Good morning and welcome to my podcast on calculating the pH and the antilogs. Now we use this in our Chemistry 30 courses to calculate the, uh, again, the pH and antilogs of the uh, uh, of acids and bases. Um, but it's a, it's, a good, it's a good review of how to use this uh, logarithmic scales anyhow. Now we're going to look at this in terms of how to calculate this and we're actually going to look at the intuition behind how to calculate this as well. Uh, so let's get going. All right, so pH and POH are defined as the uh, negative log of the concentration of the hydrogen and the hydroxide ions, respectively. And what that's saying is that if you have a high pH, it means that you have a solution that is uh, very basic, and if you have a low pH, you have a solution that is going to be acidic. Okay, So we're going to look at that in just a moment here, but just before we get into calculating the pH, let's just take a moment and uh, look at these relationships here. Uh, between logarithms and exponential functions. All right, so uh, first of all, I'm not sure how much you know background you might have in logarithmic scales, but we're just going to look at this to start with here. So the log base B of A or log A of base B is equal to N. Now that's really saying the same thing where B raised to the exponent N is equal to A. They actually mean the same thing. They're inverses of each other. So this is the exponential form right here, and this is the inverse of that exponential form. But I want you to notice that log base B of A is really the same thing. Okay, and we're just going to say uh, equals N. Now, it's really saying this. Base B raised to N is equal to A. So that means exactly the same thing as base B raised to N is equal to A. So once again, they're saying the same thing just in a in a different way. All right, so they're both exponential relationships. This is the uh, exponential form, and this is the logarithmic uh, form here. And we're going to be looking at how to use this logarithmic scale here, or this form here. Okay, just give me a moment just to get rid of this for one second here. All right, so now we're going to come back and we're going to look at this in terms of properties. So the first property we're going to look at is this one right here. So log of well, we'll just say log base B of B is equal to N. Now we know that B is actually 1. So log base B of B raised to uh, the exponent 1 is equal to 1. But this is also saying that B raised to some number must be equal to B of 1. Well, what would that number be? That's right, folks. That would be 1. So b of 1 is equal to 1. And since we have the same bases, we can just say that 1 is equal to 1. Okay, and that's going to be that's going to turn out to be very important when we look at logarithmic scales here. So let me just uh, get, clean this up a wee little bit here. Okay, coming back up here, I'm going to look at what we call the common log. Okay, so this is called the common log. And it's base 10. And uh, one of the reasons that we call common log uh, as a base 10 is that that's how we used to count with. So we have 10 fingers, so we have log base 10. OK, so anyways, that being said, that's just a little a little side being you know distracted a little bit there. Uh, when we talk about log of 10 of base 10 is equal to, OK, and I'm just going to just leave this as a box for a second. So notice that in, in this particular one here, it's very similar to what we just looked at with this property right here. We said that this base raised to this exponent must equal this, log of 10. So let's just look at that down here. Let's go 10 raised to, and I'm just going to put a box here, is equal to 10 of what? Of 1 right? Because this is actually 1 here. And that can be any integer and so forth, okay? So this has to be 10 to the, that's right, 10 to the 1. All right, so now, because we have the same bases, this really becomes 1 is equal to 1. Okay, uh, I'm just going to pause this and clean it up, and I'll come back and explain what we're doing here. Okay, so we're looking at, at pH here, and I want to give you an example, and I want you to also know that the P in pH really stands for the negative log of any quantity. And, uh, and of course, in, in acids, we're talking about an in increasing hydronium hydroxide concentration, oh, sorry, hydrogen concentration, and that's in solution, okay? So when we talk about the molar concentration in aqueous solution, 
we're really talking about a small value. So we use these logarithmic scales, and they're used to uh, discuss the changes in order of magnitudes between the various solutions. So I'm just going to define this right now. Is when we when we go to define pH and pOH, well, pH is defined as the negative log base 10 of your concentration of hydronium or hydrogen ions and your pOH down here, I'll just change this here for a second, your pOH is also defined as the negative log, okay, and this is going to be negative log base 10 of your concentration of hydroxide ions in solution. Now notice I'm not actually putting the base 10 in here. If you don't see that in here, you can assume it's not the natural log and that it is, it is uh, the common log base 10. Okay, so what is this really saying? Well, let's just say that we have, oh, I don't know, let's say this is, this concentration here is 10 to the minus 5, okay? So what that's saying is this is the negative log of base 10 raised to 10 to the minus 5, and that's going to be equal to, well, what? So now, I'm just going to uh, erase this POH for a second so that, well, in fact, I can just move it out of the way too. Let's just move that out of the way. Okay? So now, coming back here, let's just look at this in terms of, uh, uh, now we know we have a negative here and we have a negative here, so we can't forget those. But 10 raised to what power is going to be equal 10 to the negative 5? So 10 raised to what power? is going to be equal to 10 to the negative 5. Well, that's negative 5. Right? Does that make sense? But don't forget that this is the negative log. So, in other words, this means that it's negative times negative. Now, these are the same bases, so we can get rid of the bases. And then we have the negative from the negative log here times the negative 5 here is equal to plus 5. And I know that's a little bit messy, and I'm sorry about that, but uh, I think you get the idea that what we're doing here is we're, we're finding the log, and we're taking a negative value here and making it positive. And in chemistry, that's what we prefer to work with. Okay, I'm going to come back. I'm going to clean this up. Uh, keep in mind that what we just found was this, okay? And, okay, this is the inverse or the ex exponential form of this, okay? So this logarithmic scale is inverse of the exponential form. Okay, I'm just going to pause it and I'll come back. Okay, we want to calculate the pH for this question here, but before we calculate the pH of this question right here, we need to actually answer this question and figure it out in terms of number of uh, moles and uh, find out what the concentration of hydrogen is and then check, calculate the pH from there. So those few things we got to do. Now when we do these questions, we need to get a, a balanced equation, a stoichiometry, uh, a balanced equation, and from there find the stoichiometry of the solution. Um, the ratio of the concentration of the products to the reactants, all right? So let's just have a quick look here and we'll set this up. Now I've put this chart up here and uh, this is one of the ways I remember how to do mole conversions and so forth. So if we're looking for the number of moles here, it's the mass divided by the concentration. If we're looking, you know, if we're looking for the mass, it's the uh, molar mass, you know, the concentration times the number of moles and so forth. And uh, you can remember that the, the concentration is what? Or the, the sorry, the uh, uh, moles is what? Okay, so looking at this, we know that we want to find the number of moles here. So in this particular case, the number of moles is equal to your mass divided by your concentration, or your mass times the inverse of that concentration. So mass over m. Okay, that's kind of hard to tell here. Let's just you know, I, I just use it for simply just that particular reason here. Now, all right, let's get rid of that for a moment. Uh, now that's up to you if you want to use that or not, but. Uh, uh, that's what I do. So anyways, uh, coming here, we have the, we need the pH of a solution that has 5 grams of hydrochloric acid in solution. Okay, so we need to go from, uh, from gram, we need to go from mass, we need to go to moles. So we need the number of moles, so we know it's going to be a division here. So in other words, we need to find the concentration of hydrochloric acid, okay? And what that's going to be is it's going to be equal to, first of all, we know that there's 5 grams. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that by the molar mass. 
the inverse of it, or we're going to divide. I'm going to just do the reciprocal here. So in, in other words, uh, in one mole, the molar mass, and again you get this from the periodic table, is equal to 36.5 grams. Okay, notice that grams are going to cancel, but we also need per liter, right, because that's that's a concentration, and we know that there's 0.2, oh sorry, 250 mils, which is 0 0.250 liters, so times one, oops, didn't want that to come here, so this is going to be one over 0 0.250 liters, and that's going to tell you that the concentration of your hydrochloric acid is equal to 0 0.55 molar. Okay, so now let's just do a uh, let's just write out the equation here. So we have hydrochloric acid, and this is in an aqueous environment, and it's going to produce, it's going to dissociate completely to produce hydrogen ions plus chlorine ions. Okay, and that this is going to be a one to one to one relationship. In other words, that the hydrogen here is going to be the same concentration as, as the hydrochloric acid here, and the same with the chlorine. So in other words, the concentration of the hydrogen or hydronium ions will be also 0 0.55 molar. Okay, so that being said, let's go over here and look at calculating the pH uh, in an equilibrium concentration. So we define the pH as equal to the negative log and I'm going to put it here, although usually it's not, base 10, okay, in this particular case here, of the concentration of the hydronium ions, okay? Okay, so that's going to be equal to 0 0.55, okay? So in other words, the negative log base 10, 10 raised to what power is going to give us 0 0.55? Well, if you take the negative log of this, and all you have to do on your calculator is you should have a negative. Now, this is not the plus or negative, okay? But you want to put this negative here, and then you want to press on. It, for mine, it's a scientific calculator log, and it's going to bring up this, and then you put 0 0.55, and that should equal 0 0.26. So that's the pH of this solution here, of hydrochloric acid, with a, a concentration, molar concentration of 0.55 molar. Now, that being said, if we want to find the uh, we want to find the exponential relationship of that, the rever uh, inverse of that. So remember, if we come back up here, what we've done is we've defined um, we have defined the log base 10 of a. We've, we've done this, okay? But now, if you want to find the exponential relationship with the inverse, so you want to do the reverse, then you're going to click on your uh, 10 to the x button on your calculator. And we define the inverse as the negative, sorry, as the negative pH. Okay, so we're going to look at this as the antilog. So the antilog, basically the antilog, is equal to, and we're going to look at this in terms of the negative pH. So we're doing the absolute opposite here, the base 10 raised to the negative pH. So again, why negative? Because we want to get this back to where it was, right? We're doing the absolute re reciprocal here. So a few things you can do on this calculation here. What I usually do is I'll hit my, I'll click on my second function key, and then I'll go to my, again, 10x button here, and then I'll type in negative, and this is all going to be in brackets, and then your concentration 0.55, and equals, and that should give you, again, your uh, original concentration is 0.55. Okay, so that's how we do that. Now, I'm going to show you the logic behind this uh, coming up in part B and take you to another chart here. So hopefully this has helped, and uh, we'll talk to you.